Aussie Van Man, show me your best goat impersonation. Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm super excited because we are going to Mount Rainier, a place that has been on my personal bucket list for quite some time. And you guys are coming with me. Now, if you are wanting to come to Mount Rainier, there's gonna be a couple things that you're gonna have to deal with. Number one, crowds. It's always pretty busy here. So they recommend that you come before 9 a.m. if you're interested in not having to stand in a line or wait in a line rather with your vehicle. We didn't get here at that time. So there's a tiny little line, but it's nothing too crazy. But I can already see the rangers up at the front so that leads me to number two park pass you can use your america the beautiful park pass at mount rainier and it's going to be good for not only your vehicle but up to four passengers so if you're coming with a family once again the america the beautiful pass really pays off Okay, we're in, we're in the park. So by having the park pass, they literally were just like, go through the right hand side. They just asked to see it and then we're in. Typically they do ask you for your ID along with it, but because they had such a high volume, they just looked at it, acknowledged, and here we are. We're now at Mount Rainier National Park, one of my bucket list parks, and I am so excited. Riley, do you have a park pass? I do, yes. Do you love it? I do love it. I think everyone needs one. Yeah, definitely. For Absolutely. Sure. Aussie Van Man, he just picked up a park pass. How much did it cost you? $80. And it's good for? One year. Yay! So he's going to be checking out some national parks on his channel. Go follow the link in the description box below. So we're about to take on to the road. It's Riley and me and Aussie Van Man, and we are about to head on this way and try to find ourselves a visitor center. Why a visitor center? Because that's where you get all the good information, the juicy details, the brain wrinkles, and a little bit of context for the park itself. So we're gonna do that, and we're also going to look for a patch, of course. Okay, we drove up the road just a little ways and we're about to check out our very first viewpoint. Now, when we were in Eatonville, we could see the mountain from the place that we were staying, which was absolutely gorgeous, but being able to be closer to it is so spectacular. And so I really wanna share with you guys what this looks like. Now we're parked in this big parking lot. Again, we haven't made it even to the first visitor center yet. And so here you can have your first access to a beautiful viewpoint. And there's actually a couple places that you can view it from, but uh, we're going to the official one first. Now along the way there are several of these educational signs and we'll touch on those in just a minute on our way back. But first, I want to get a view of this mountain. So we're walking along this boardwalk area right here along what they call their nature trail. It's a very short path to where you can have the viewpoint. In fact, it's only a couple of hundred feet down this path and there it is. In this direction you can see the bridge that we just crossed over to get here as well as the creek that is flowing it's not super high right now but you can get a good view of it along this rocky crag and then here is the viewpoint with a great view of the mountain as you can see I think you can see why I wanted to come here. It is gorgeous and we are late, late, late into the summer months and there is still snow up on Mount Rainier. Now, some of my mountain house friends have actually gone to the summit of this and seeing them do that was so inspirational to me that I wanted to at least be here to witness this beauty of a park. And so here I am seeing this just with permagrin on my face. And at the same time, 
let's get to some of the brain wrinkles. Now along the way with some of our brain wrinkles, we learn about things that kind of make the environment exactly what it is when we're here. So here we find this about the river that is below us. Now today the waters are running just very gradually. You can barely see them because of the tree coverage, but this is a better view of what this looks like. The water coming into this creek area is all coming from the glacial melt on the top of Mount Rainier. So it is super, super cold. This is all of the surface runoff. And on years where they have had incredible snow, they've actually had massive pushing of the waters down this creek. And it has actually changed the course of the waterway because there was so much coming down. Now, in addition to the waterway changing, you can also see here that the landscape itself has changed a lot. In fact, the trees are less dense, and this is a result of mud flows that have happened from Mount Rainier. And so that's why stopping at these kind of signs is very important because what you're seeing here in front of us is only part of the story. Learning its story through signs like this really pulls it all together. Okay guys, we made it finally to the museum, the visitor center, the lodging area, and then also where there are several of the trails. So I think the first thing that we're gonna do is find a patch. The second thing we're gonna do is check out a museum and uh, we'll get a little bit of a lay of the land and see if there's anything else that we can do while we're here at Rainier. Now, it is getting kind of warm today. It has been a heat wave through this area, so it's really heating up and with that, the humidity comes. So we'll We'll have to kind of weigh that out when it comes to exploring a little bit, but always trying to be safe rather than sorry. So let's go inside and find out what's here. Before we go into the first building, we find this sign that says, Welcome to Historic Longmire. This historic village at Longmire has been the gateway to Mount Rainier since James Longmire opened a mineral spring resort here in the 1880s. And as you look at this map, you can see where all the different pieces kind of are here. They have a general store, an inn. They have an old gas station, which is pretty cool looking. It's right next to the restrooms. We are about to go into the museum right here. There's also a wilderness information center and there's a residential and maintenance area. So these are for park employees. Now also here you can find information about the trail. That's kind of like a discovery trail that takes you down the path of human history in this area. And it leaves out from this very area. So we could stay parked in this parking lot and start exploring. And this is a great way for you to do something that is a little bit less aggressive. A lot of people think when they think of Mount Rainier you're only summiting it but there's so many other things to do here that don't involve those big summit hikes and they are a lot more family friendly or ADA friendly so keep that in mind and definitely make this stop one that you come to first when you come into the park to find out more. Now at many of the national parks we find tree cookies and this is a Douglas fir that began to grow in 1293 so this thing has been here for a while and as you kind of pull out from this you see all of these little plaques on the tree itself that tell you different important dates in history. And just to kind of give you an idea of how tall this thing is, I am 5'7". I come up just a bit above where the crack for the middle of the tree is. And so there's like a good two and a half to three feet even above my head. So this thing is like eight to nine feet tall on its side. And at one point in time, this tree would have stood over 100 to 200 feet up into the sky. And uh, let's find out a few of these important dates that this tree right here could tell us about. In 1350, the Little Ice Age began and it caused Mount Rainier's glaciers to advance. 
In 1400, the major mud flow event happened and Mount Rainier was inundated with all of the Puget Sound lowlands. In 1800, a 57 year eruptive period started for Mount St. Helens, which is not super far away from here. This triggered a minor eruption of Mount Rainier during this period between 1820 and 1854. By 1850, it also had the Little Ice Age coming to an end. In the 1880s, there was a lot of action going on and Mount Baker in Washington also had some erupting. It flowed over into Mount Rainier once again in 1894. So what's all this talk about erupting? Normally we don't hear about erupting. We've heard of Mount St. Helens, many of us, but the rest of these mountains have just been places that we've explored for years and years and years without incident. However, all of these sites here in Washington at one point in time have been active. And because of that, you can still kind of see some uh, remnants of that as you look around the parks. Now, a lot of times they're a little bit more buried, a little bit more concealed, but they are in fact part of an active system of volcanoes. That's right, the Pacific Northwest is covered in volcanoes. Now we are going to go and see some information exhibits inside of the museum. I like that they have all of these outside so that you can take pictures of them. This reduces the amount of paper that's being used, which is very nice. Also, they do daily weather condition updates. So stopping off at the visitor center and the museum has a lot of perks to it, including finding out a little bit more about what you can expect. Ooh, Riley just brought this to my attention. They actually have a Longmire historic district walking tour also that tells you a little bit more about many of the buildings here. And that's kind of neat. Okay, inside we go. Okay, so I found a patch and then we're gonna go exploring. Okay, now that we are inside, there's a lot of other people here, but I wanna to talk to you about a few of the things that are inside the museum portion. They have a brief walk through time, and it kind of then ends with some of the animals we could see while here at Mount Rainier. So let's go check out a, a few of the steps in time before those animals. Despite the fact that it was probably very unlikely that Native Americans lived in this area year round, this was more of a seasonal stop. All of these tribes called the Mount Rainier area home at one point. Within these displays, you can see some of the canoes that they might have used and some of the continued history for the tribes of this area. In fact, through some of these photos, you can see some of the tribal employees actually talking to people and doing ranger style talks to educate others about the Native American history at Mount Rainier. Additionally, we find some of the tools that might have been used at the time, and they're very elaborate, very detailed. Even on this one on the end here, you can see that there's a special carving on the end of the scoop itself. Enclosed in this cabinet is actually a map of where some of the tribes of the areas might have been, including the coastal tribes, which we learned about in some of our other adventures on the Pacific Northwest travels. This is a serving tray and some of the canoe paddles that would have been used by the natives at that time. In addition to, now as we proceed through time, we then learn about some of the mountaineers. And these mountaineers featured on this wall have all had a very important part of the Mount Rainier story. In fact, the first recorded ascent of Mount Rainier is documented here in this very museum. Did you know that between 1890 and 1891, the first roads were actually created to allow people into Mount Rainier National Park? And this is what those full tours might have looked like. Those roads were very narrow, very different than what we have currently, and people were flocking to this area. At one point, even, they had horse-drawn stages for others to arrive. They would bring in goods and services and then also take people around the park. Those historic photos are everything. They're clear, they're crisp. They show you what the park looked like and what it looks like now today. But did you know that Mount Rainier was the fifth national park? It was the fifth one. That is so, so neat. It always surprises me to see which parks were brought into the park system at different times and why they were brought there. In fact, some of the feats of bringing Mount Rainier in were because people wanted to protect the land. They wanted to make sure that it was safe for others to go to and they wanted to preserve the things that were found here. They didn't want people to pick things up and take them out of the park that might have been native artifacts and things like that. So it's really really cool to be able to see all of these photos in this room right here and get a little bit more of a context of the history. But now, now we get to creep in and see 
all of the animals. The first little critter that I am just drawn to is this pika right here. I did find some of these whenever I was at Mount Evans. I confused them for a marmot because I'd never seen either, but this is much smaller than a marmot and I'll show you what a marmot is in just a minute. Now each of these displays is kind of divided up based on where the animals would live. So all of these with the pika are in the alpine zone and you can see there's a few birds down here and there is a mountain goat skull. Now in the subalpine zone you have your gold mantled ground squirrels, your marmots which are much larger, and this little guy right here which is a deer mouse and it's so cute. In the lower and mid elevation forest there is a snowshoe hare aka a bunny and then you also have a long-tailed weasel and then there's this guy right here which is a barred owl. There's also this tiny little baby deer and then also these guys right here. Ooh, they look mischievous, don't they? Also another interactive display, it asks you to ask these questions. What makes tracks like these? Guess, then open the door to find out. I think that that is a raccoon. Is it? It is a skunk. That is definitely not a raccoon. Now in this last part of the gallery, we ask ourselves, how was Mount Rainier made? And also, what makes it so unique and special? And here you can find out more about the glaciers of Mount Rainier, and then also some of the volcanic action that's happened. So it's really, really cool, and there's a ton of historic photos in this one. It's actually kind of sad to see, but it puts it into context for you. This is the Paradise Glacier. The first photo, the one on the left, is in 1929. And then the second one is in 1986. And you can see that there's a huge difference. In fact, it's separated from the snow source above. The glacier is now considered to be stagnant in 1986. Now you can also find out what a glacier actually is and what its purpose is. And right here it says that it's a moving river of ice. And it's super important for a lot of things that happen, not only within the mountain itself, but in other parts of the ecosystem. So whenever you hear people talk about that we're having too many of the glaciers melting and it's really bad, that's why. Okay, since we finished up exploring inside the museum, we're gonna move over to the general store just to kind of check it out, see what's here. And um, Mr. Aussie Van Man Brock, he got us some information about a couple different places that we might wanna check out also. However, one thing, we lost Riley. We don't know where Riley went. Hashtag, where's Riley? Oh my goodness, while well, in the general store, look what I just found. It's a mountain house. Yep, this is the creamy mac and cheese. That one is so delightful. Yeah, this is taking a lot for me not to buy this, but I think I have one of these in the van already. As we step foot out onto the general store porch, look, another view of the mountain. Okay guys, now that we have finished up at the general store, seeing that phenomenal view, we're gonna do the Trail of Shadows. This is a shorter trail. It leaves right out of the Longmire area and just kind of goes along the roadway and makes a 0.7 mile loop. So I feel comfortable doing that one, even despite the heat today. So we're gonna find out what this trail has to offer and get a few more brain wrinkles. And as we do, the first sign that we come upon, not even 50 feet into the trail is this, Life on the Edge. It talks about James Longmire and how by 1883, a local pioneer and explorer, James Longmire, saw the beauty and economic benefits of the mineral spring. His vision gave rise to the development and expansion of a meadow as a tourist destination. And here you can see some of the photos from that time. And it's pretty interesting because like here is a park garage and you can see the older vehicles that they had. They there is that old gas station that's just across the street and then the buildings that we were just exploring around. But look at this. One of the activities offered by early park concessionaires included wintertime dog sleds. So once guests arrived at this area, they had a variety of different activities that they could participate in and enjoy just like we do today. Now, 
picture this all of this area right here was part of that concessionaires area so everything would have just been bustling at the time especially whenever the park first officially opened so now let's go and take the trail of shadows learn a little bit more about the people and also this magnificent place now there are a few bumps a few dings a few uneven surfaces but at the same time for the most part this is an easy trail in fact it's ranked easy whenever you come in now with that said though mount rainier is not the most dog friendly place so if you're wanting to bring your dog unfortunately it's kind of hard to do that here so there's signs kind of here and there saying no dogs and um it's just kind of what it is there's bears in this area so it kind of makes sense oh this is pretty cool it tells you what these very interesting looking little plants are it says these are common horse tails I've never seen these before. This is really neat. But in addition to the small signs that tell you what things are, it actually has an expansive sign right here telling you a little bit more about each one of the things. For example, that horsetail we were just looking at, it is actually known for its hair cleansing properties and it's a cure for diarrhea. Wow! Okay, I think you can see by the height of these trees in comparison to a full-grown person, these are not small trees. These are huge, massive behemoths of trees. They are so big and there are hundreds upon hundreds of them. In fact, here we learn a little bit more about how the trees are the bones of the old growth forest. If your bones support your body, the trees are very similar. They provide structure, protection, storage, and support. I have to say, being here and seeing this, I can see now why everyone told me to come to Rainier. It's beautiful here. The forest is magnificent. And seeing some of these old growth trees along with the newer ones, it's just super impressive. And the more that we do, here the more intriguing it gets we have reached the marker that we have just come 0.2 miles we have 0.5 miles left on this trail and it goes in this direction what did you find did Bubbles. you find a spring i think so it smells a bit funny over here though so i don't know if it's got like natural gases so um this was just discovered and it seems to be leaking into this area and this area seems to have a lot of mineral collection now this area that we are in currently is very much so a part of the volcanic region so that could be what has made this happen not sure As we've learned at so many forests before, part of the life cycle of the trees is that when they go down, they actually become something for new growth. But do you see this? This is actually the bottom side of a tree. You ever wonder what the bottom side of a tree looks like? Well, it looks kind of like this. All of these mangled, gnarly roots. But wait, here are all the mangled, gnarly, crazy looking roots. But then there's this guy. Emerging from the previous tree, there is a lone tree. So amongst all the gnarly, crazy, twisting, turning roots, there is this 
piece that sticks up and in fact is a new tree growing high up into the sky. And just how big do these trees get? Well, they just keep going and going and going. Look at that in comparison to the size of the trail. It's always pretty amazing when you're driving through the forest and you just see these mammoth trees. But when you see them like this, you truly can understand the sheer size because they're no longer in an upright where it just looks like a big thing. You could actually move around this one and see how large it is and also how long it is. And I love that and I appreciate them having this particular trail here so we can learn about these things without having to do something super, super difficult. I always like the trails that kind of are interpretive. The interpretive trails tell you a lot about the areas that you're visiting and the history. And that's what I truly enjoy whenever I get out and explore and I hope you guys do too. Now, as you look into this clearing, you can see some more of that mineral deposit that's out there. That's pretty fascinating to see. It's so large. In fact, whenever we saw it earlier, it was far over in this direction. But now you can get a little glimpse through. You can't go to it, but you can definitely see it. This makes a lot more sense now. We just arrived to the part of the trail that has the rusty springs and it said in the museum earlier that the Longmire area was actually created as a result of this particular spring, which could explain the other thing that we saw earlier flowing freely from the ground. It would have been high in mineral content and as you can see here, it talks a little bit more about how it oxidizes, but more so we can look over at the actual springs themselves and see that oxidized color. Definitely super cool. Just on the opposite side of the springs, you see this is the runoff from that, and it's that weird oxidized orangey color. It's really interesting to see how it flows into the rest of the environment around. But yeah, that's what this is. Totally makes sense now. This is why you read the signs. Now that was super cool, but there's something even more cool right up this hill. Let's go and explore a little bit more. It says here, this is part of the shadow of the past. Longmire's dream was interrupted by the rise of more modern businesses that grew around Mount Rainier. But there were a handful of cabins that stood here at one point in time. You can see one of these in the distance and we're about to go inside. Now you can see handprints from all of those who have dipped their hands into the rich mineral springs along the walls. The door is open and this isn't a very big cabin, but inside we find some very basic furnishings, a table, a window, and what looks like a day bed. Then in the back there, we have the stove, which would have been used to keep warm during the winter months. Or it could have been used to keep warm on a cool night in the middle of summer. Did you know that here at Mount Rainier, they actually get down to the 30s sometimes, even during summertime? Yeah, at nighttime, it gets chilly here, which is why the snow on the mountain never seems to melt. Well, fully at least. It does melt because that's what we're seeing go through the park, but you know what I'm saying. Along the trail also, you'll find all of these new growth trees, which are just really awesome. And then across, there is that opening once again. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a better view.
Now in this area you'll find a lot of marshy land and here the beavers thrive. In fact this is the beavers hometown right here and you can see some of the damage that they do to the trees as they harvest them and take them into the marshy lands below. As we continue along the path we find this which actually talks about the old hotel that used to be in this area. This was the Longmire Medical Resort and the people would actually pay eight dollars per week for board and treatment in the springs. Over here you can see a stone structure and we're gonna go and get a little bit of a closer look at it. It looks like there is another spring right inside here. So again this guy knew what he was doing when it came to putting this area together and it really had a lot of appeal. Now that was cool. It's still bubbling and it still flows. Very very neat. Super cool to see. We made it back to the van and as you can see, whoo, I am red and sweating because it is warm out there today. Also super bright, hence the sunglasses. But whenever I got back into the van, let me show you something. The internal temperature of the van today is 111 degrees whenever parked just in this parking lot. So yeah, this is a hot one today. So I'm going to go ahead and hang up my patch that I got onto my van ceiling to commemorate my trip here to Mount Rainier. And then I'm going to hop on the walkie and find out if we can figure out where's Riley. Okay, there it is. Okay guys, we drove just a little bit further up the road and uh, guess what? We found another pull off. Now this viewpoint is epic, I must say, and it talks about how the glacial rivers move. In fact, there's a sign here that talks a little bit more about how dynamic that the water flow from these glacier areas are. And you can see where it's cut a massive trench into the mountainside where all the water can pass through. Now, because it's summer, it's not a huge snow melt right now. And so you're just having this nice flow flowing water, but it's very small in comparison to what it can be in the spring months as the original melt starts to kind of flow down. So check this out. As you can see here, the mountain just kind of shears off and then there's this big open area with all of these stones that are being tossed around and tumbled into smooth surfaces. In the distance there, you can kind of see where the river is flowing, but over time it continues to evolve and change and take up this entirety of the area. And it creates a very interesting pattern that as you can see, shears off both sides of the edges. What are these little berries? Does anybody know? If you do, leave it in the comments. Oh my goodness. We were driving and there's a pull off and I just saw something and I, I made sure I made the pull off. It's one of those kind of stops and uh, you're about to see why. Did you see it? Did you see it? Oh, oh, we're gonna get a little bit closer, it's okay. you so guys it's beautiful and it's actually really easy to access now it is some stairs down but if you can do it stop at this one And so it only took a couple minutes and we were able to get a couple selfies, a couple of beautiful views and <sighs> Mount Rainier, Mount Rainier, Mount Rainier. Another pull off, another impressive view. <sighs> this park does not disappoint at any point. In fact, we were kind of driving around and noticed that there was a road closure. So we were kind of freaking out thinking, oh no, we're not gonna get to see more. And then this popped up. In fact, at this turnout, we come into the mid mountain forest and we have been climbing in altitude, let me tell you. But it's absolutely beautiful and a perfect spot to see the mountain.
along we found another waterfall. This place just continues to amaze me and blow my mind. We're currently at the top and you can walk down to the bottom down in this direction and if you do you can see the 163 foot waterfall. What? It's wild. But if you've ever wondered what the top part of a waterfall looks like, this is it. This is it right here. This view is everything. If I do say so myself, he has the greatest view and I just got some cool photos of his van. So uh, yeah, this place is amazing. Oh, we made it to paradise. Literally, we made it to paradise. And it is so amazing to see what is not only ahead of us, but also behind us. When you get to this part, you're at about 5,400 feet above sea level. And here's where you start to see the flowers blooming in the fields, some smaller paths out to kind of explore and this view of Mount Rainier. Now this is the closest that we're gonna to get today to the mountain probably, but oh my goodness, it's gorgeous. There's a little bit of a foggy overcast over the top where you can see the clouds. And uh, it's just a spectacular view and definitely one that I'm glad that we made it up to. In fact, let me just show you. Wow, just beyond where we just were, we came down and there was a little waterfall on the side of the road and then we made it to Paradise River. This is, oh, oh my goodness, it's just knocking my breath out. Just being so beautiful. So many flowers, butterflies, little tiny fuzzy bees, and this view.
Okay guys, we're at our last stop of the day here at Mount Rainier and as you can see, it, it looks like it might be potentially getting a little bit darker. It is, it's actually late in the afternoon and this is a spot that we were told about whenever we stopped off at that first stop, the very first one, the museum. So I can't wait to share this one with you. I think there might be a little surprise there but we have to go and see if it is in fact present today. So, uh, cross our fingers. Now we were told it's just beyond this closed road. We go up and there is a viewpoint in this direction. So let's check. Okay, just beyond the gate, there is another gate and we were told to go to that one and then there would eventually be like a little trail to an overlook. In the meantime though, look at this. This is a huge slide that has come down and off the mountain. These boulders are massive. So <laughs> that's why the road's closed because it's a kind of scary spot through here and they're working on the crossing back here that goes over the water too because they also had a slide. So while that's happening, we're just gonna keep walking a little bit further and uh, look for some mountain goats. Now, if we don't see them today, that's okay, but it would be super cool if we did. And the rangers said that usually they're out, especially later in the evening. So it's later in the evening. We're going to try this if we can find where we're supposed to go. <sighs> we're still looking. We're still looking. But at the same time, we're being very cautious because in this area, especially later in the afternoon, also some of the more predatory animals come out and they have mountain lions here. So uh, not trying to become a morsel. And uh, uh, yeah. So onward we go. Okay, so two things. We just saw a cyclist. We asked him if he had seen them further back this way. No goats. He also said he hasn't been seeing them since he's been coming back up this way. So maybe not the right time to catch them. I know in Mount Evans, they exist on the rocks and hop around and kind of look at you in a condescending way, but I don't see them. And this would be the most logical place for them to be on this area that's had the rock slide because that's the kind of like place that they like to be. But I don't see anything. I don't see anything. I mean, I do see something. I see an epic area to explore, but I, I don't see goats. So maybe they're just not here right now. And that is the unpredictable part of nature. You come to a beautiful place, you keep your mind kind of open and your eyes around you kind of on a pivot and you see amazing things like we have seen today. We hiked some of the small sections. We got to see a couple of waterfalls. It was absolutely beautiful. And that is the joy of coming to Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier is welcoming to all. Whether you are young or old, whether you have the best hiking abilities or the least, you can still come here and see something spectacular. And that is why I wanted to make sure this was on my bucket list. Today we have had such a good time exploring some of the park, but there's a lot left to explore. So I'm going to challenge you guys to come out and see some of those other stops. Tell me what you think, and I'm gonna come back here on a later date and share some more adventures here at Mount Rainier. If you've enjoyed coming along, make sure you leave a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and remember guys, we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time, and today was definitely that. Till next time guys, bye! Oh, and uh, P.S. We did find Riley. She just wanted to go ahead a little bit to go check out a couple waterfalls and we didn't know where she went and we were really stressed, but she was fine. <sighs> she was just out exploring. Okay, okay, till next time.